Hi, this is Randy. Welcome to my channel, Omega Times, or End Times, I believe we're living in. If you get a chance, would you please hit the subscribe button? I would appreciate it. It's the lower right-hand corner of your screen. And if you would click like, it will help me. So I need to get to 1,000 subscribers in order for YouTube to help me push this out and offer it to people. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we're going to be talking about today, why are people leaving the church? A lot of people are, are leaving the church. They're not going to church anymore. And church attendance is down across the country. And we need to realize that there are some problems that we can help ourselves with. And we need to try to understand everybody that needs to go to church. And it's unhealthy for us to not be able to educate people on how important it is to worship with other people. So we're going to talk about people that are leaving the church. Unhealthy focus on growth causes some people to get disinterested. When they become more obsessed with numbers and they, it leads to comparison to other churches, oh, this church runs 5,000, this one runs 10,000, this one has 25,000, and then you get to feeling like you're a failure. I'm pastoring a small church. I've only got 50 or 60 people. Or I'm pastoring a church of 150, and these guys have got thousands. You don't want to compare yourself to other churches. They're not in your situation. They're in a different situation. Mega churches account for 0.05% of all churches in the United States. Now, mega church means you have 2,000 or more worshipers worshiping every week at your church. A half a percent of all the churches in the United States are mega churches. 99.5% of the churches are not mega churches. So don't compare yourself to someone like that. That's not what you should be doing, all right? Not knocking them. I'm just trying to tell you, don't beat yourself down over it because it's not the majority, they're the minority. And so mega churches are just quite 2,000 and more and puts them out of a different league than with regular churches. What does it say about regular churches? 90% of the churches in the U.S. have less than 200 people. Let me say that again. 90% of all churches in the United States have less than 200 people attending each week. Not only that, only 0.05% are megachurches. 90% are less than 200 people. 80% of the churches in the United States have less than 100 members. So eight out of every 10 churches has less than 100 worshipers each week. So most pastors will fall into the 200, 100 or less category, 90%, instead of the half a percent of megachurches. It's estimated that somewhere between 177,000 and 200 worship churches, churches where people go to worship, they, not, they are not only less than 100, but that 177 to 200,000 is below 60 members. They have less than 60 or less attending their church each week. All right, that's a lot of, a lot of churches almost 200,000 or thereabout, that have less than 60 people, 60 or less. So if you're in that boat, you need to think different than a mega pastor does because they've got thousands and thousands. They're in a metropolitan area. They draw different. They're on TV. You're not. So don't compare yourself with them. They're, they're the exception to the rule. Every church has an optimum size. Optimum size is determined by the things like demographics, your population, where your church is located. You know, is it in a residential neighborhood? Is it on a main street? You know, is it in an industrial neighborhood? It, 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 a lot of factors factor why, you know, a church, some churches get drive-by traffic. They drive by and they see the big church and all that. So if you're in a town of 500 or 1,000 or 2,500 or 5,000 people in your town, and you're pastoring a church and you run 100 or you run less than 60, you're still important to God. Those people still need a pastor, and they still need you, and they need the pastors. And we need to realize that 
If you're in a town of that size, 500, 2,500, 5,000, you're never going to have a mega church. You're never probably going to ever run 500, part, probably not. Depends on how many churches are in your little town. So pastor and shepherd your flock that God has given you. And I'm going to try to talk about what we can do to possibly strengthen and make it a little bit more uh, people coming more to the church. The spiritual growth of your members has to be important. The leadership, your pastor will also factor into a church on how many people attend it. Do they like your pastor? Do they find him interesting? You know, things of this nature. Sometimes we should look at the quality of our preaching and teaching and our music program. It is, in, uh, is your ministry meeting the needs of the people that go there? Do the sermons lead people to grow in the Lord? We need to videotape. Well, they don't use videotape no more. But you need to put your service on a camera and take a look. Take it home. Look at it and see how did the service go? How did the music program go? How did the preaching go? You know, how did how did everything do? Get a good quality uh, camera to shoot your your service and take a look at it. Teaching. Are we teaching on subjects that will help the people, stuff that they're interested in that will affect their life to grow in the Lord? You need to review that and find out what your teaching is. Do you have small groups? You say, well, how can I have a small group when I'm running 60 people? Well, you could have two or three groups in your church that are small groups. Small groups is small groups, all right? They could be five to 10 people and they get together, you know, and they they talk about the Bible and things that affect their life and everything else, small groups. Healthy leaders will lead a healthy church, all right? So you have to be a healthy leader so you can have a healthy church and you have to be able to reach people. Music is really good in church and getting hot musicians when you have a church of less than 60 people is not always easy. It's important to set the service up with music and people's lives uh, 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 revolve around worshiping the Lord and the music program. But the thrust, the main thrust of the church has to be preaching the word of God, not preaching what you think, but what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Not what you think, but what it does it really say? Christian music is a big part business, and churches look to them to get their new songs. But we need to review those songs, look them over, see the lyrics, and find out if it's suitable for your church. You say, why is that? Because I played in praise bands for 58 years. I made five records. I, I, no, was one, two, three, four records. I made four records. I played on a couple of more for friends that needed a drummer to play for them and all that. And I've been around that. I also was on the radio in St. Louis or for three radio stations uh, years ago. So I'm a little familiar with music. And let me tell you something. Christian music is a big business. But you have to make sure that the songs that you're singing line up to the Word of God. Because if they don't line up to the Word of God, then you shouldn't be singing. They have to line up to the Word. So your worship leader needs to filter those songs and look at them before you practice them and sing them to people and make sure they are proper to do. Let's talk about generational people, the millennials, born 1981 to 1996. Big group of these people are not going to church. They're the first generation to grow up with the Internet. They're the first generation to grow up with mobile devices. Everybody's got a phone in their hand. I saw a guy on TV the other day. He's walking across the street with a phone in his hand. Roughly, he looked like he was 25. I don't know how old he was, but that's what he looked like. And he's walking across the street, and he didn't like the way this guy stopped, and he does one of these. He looks at him, and he's looking at his phone. He's looking at his car, and he's looking at his phone, and he's mad because this guy, well, he's jaywalking in the first place. He's not crossing a crosswalk, so he was in the wrong. What did he do? He walked right into a light pole, walked right into it, Dropped his phone, grabbed his face, started rubbing his head and everything else. He's so buried in his phone that he can't even see a pole he walks into. 
this is the generation that we're losing out of church uh, in big numbers, and we need to realize that millennials are important. They're the first generation, like I said, to deal with uh, the internet, mobile devices, media. Uh, they're digital natives is what they are. Why are so many of them leaving the church or not going to church? The t top three reasons why people are not going to church is these three right now. One, they moved. They're no longer in the neighborhood or maybe the town where your church is at, so they've moved. The number two reason attendance was inconvenient. The church times didn't fit their work schedule or their schedule or whatever, so they, they, didn't, they don't come. Number three, a family change. They got married or they got divorced or they got remarried or they adopted a child. They have to raise their nephew or their grandchildren are coming to live with them for whatever reason. There's a ch family change is a big reason why people don't come to church. All right. Dechurching millennials. Millennials view the church as too focused on power, too focused on money too focused on their theology rules, and too focused and too involved in politics. Now, I'm just telling you, I talked to several millennials. I also found all I could on the Internet about the millennials, and these are the things that they bring up why they don't go to church. Am I saying they're right about everything? No, I'm not. Am I saying they're wrong about everything? No, I'm not. I'm just trying to give you information and then you can decide what you want to do with it. But the reason they say they're not going to church, it's too focused on power, on money, and on politics and theology rules. So we need to realize that people are not going to put up with certain things. And politics should not come into the church. All right? Now, I know a lot of people get mad. This person should be president. The God ordained it. Oh, yeah. God knows who's getting in office, but he's not the one putting them in office, all right? It's the people that's voting for them. So we need to realize that, that we need to keep politics out of the church. If you want to gain millennials and you want to get these people that are 20 to 40 years old in your church, one of the ways you can get them in is quit talking about politics and quit making money the number one priority and quit focusing on theology rules. And I, I'm glad that not many churches have this anymore. When I was a kid, uh, the churches, you know, the man had to have short hair, woman had to have long hair. The woman, you couldn't wear a lot of jewelry. She always had to wear a dress. You know, you can't go to the theater. You can't dance. You can't, kids can't go to the school dance. On and on. All these rules that men made up after they started the main major churches. Pentecost Church of God, the one in Cleveland, Tennessee, I believe it is, Assembly of God. All these churches came around, the UPCs and all that. They all came around around 1906 to 1912. And that's when these organizations started. All right, There wasn't no rules like that prior to that. So I guess everybody did those things prior to that, probably went to hell. You know, it's crazy. All these man-made rules. So you need to get away from man-made rules and do what God wants you to do. What do millennials value? They, they value authenticity. They want you to tell them the truth. They want to know the truth. But it should be about God and the Bible and about their everyday life, not about who's the president, who's the governor, who's the senator. That shouldn't matter. All right? That shouldn't matter. They want Millennials want some con conversation on things that affects their life. Like right now, we have a lot. Uh, we're having a lot of inflation. And fuel prices, you know, three years ago, three and a half years ago, fuel was a whole lot cheaper. I mean, I, I was paying around $1.65, $1.75 a gallon. Now in my area, it's three twenty nine, three thirty nine. dollars It's been, you know, rocking around the 3 to three and a half dollar range for two or two and a half years. And so that's in, that affects families. And then grocery prices, you all know about groceries. You know, I buy the groceries for our house. And I go grocery shopping, and my wife, she has a, a part-time job, and she helps with the home and everything else. But I do the grocery shopping. I can tell you firsthand grocery prices. I see them. I mean, we don't, the only uh, beef we buy is ground beef. We don't buy steaks, 
and beef roast, we buy pork and we buy chicken because it's just too high. I'm not going to pay that. So we need to realize that they, they face this same problem as the pastor. They are the digital natives. They love technology. They love social media. They don't read the paper like the boomers do. They don't want you to tell them what to read. Give them a newspaper. They have to read what somebody's put in there. They want to look on the internet and find out what they want to look about, what they want to, they, they're interested in. Then they look it up. I mean, I, even at my age, I, I get on, I have the Kansas City Chiefs and the St. Louis Cardinals on my watch list. And anytime they put a new article out on there, it pops up. Why? That's what I read. That's what I enjoy. I love sports. As you can see, I've been involved in them all my life, you know, and I love them. But I love God first, all right? But I'm just telling you that you need to realize that boomers are not going to look at things like millennials. Millennials feel the church is just too hypocritical at times and very judgmental of people, all right? So we need to realize that we shouldn't do that to people when they come to the church. You know, what's the old saying your parents taught you? You can't judge a book by its cover. You can't judge millennials by their cover, all right? And they don't interact the way that boomers do. Boomers have face-to-face -face meetings with people. I'm going to see one of my best friends tomorrow. We get together once every week or two. It's my turn to buy breakfast. I'm buying breakfast. We're going to talk man stuff, all right? We're going to talk about, about shooting and guns and this and that, you know, cars. I um, mean, he's into uh, collector cars. I got a collector truck. And we both uh, go to car shows, and I won a lot of trophies. He's won more, even way more than me, and he's got two collector cars. This is what we talk about because we're interested in it. Well, millennials are interested in authenticity. They're interested in things that affect their life, and they don't want to talk politics at church. They want to talk about God and things that help them in their life. So we need to realize they're watching YouTube, and they're uh, looking up the conversations they want to see, and they they don't want to pay for a brick and mortar building. And they say, "Well, I can just watch church from home." All right. So you have to deal with that too with them. I know the Bible says that you're not supposed to fail to assemble yourselves in the house of the Lord. You should do it even more as you see the day approaching. I understand that you and I are on the same page, but they're not. They think I can watch it. I don't have to be around everybody else, you know, and that's the way they look. The church of today, millennials are connected to their digital devices. And if they do come to church, I can guarantee you 99% ain't going to bring a Bible. They're, the moment you give them the scripture, you put it up on a screen, they're going to go to their phone or they've got a notebook and they're going to go to the notebook and they're going to get the scriptures that way. Don't take offense that they're not carrying a 16 pound Bible because they get all their information out of that cell phone. And so they'll do the same thing with the Bible. So we need to realize that and understand that the church of today must be active and reach millennials through social media and online. If, uh, if I was pastoring today, uh, let's say I was teaching on the subject of angels, or if I was teaching on the subject of, uh, of uh, people that... Uh, uh, don't go to church like we're talking about now, or I'm teaching on a certain subject or whatever it may be, all right? Put it online. You have a church Facebook page. Get a Facebook page. If you don't have it, you need to get one, all right? And post a video and, and let people know every week, I'm going to have a video on there, and we're teaching about this subject for the next six weeks. So they can look at it at their own leisure and their own leisure when they want and they can look at it and get the information, and they know what's going on. If they want to, I'd even put on their little card or something, or wherever you want to put it at your church, that we're going to send out one text a week, or two texts a week, whatever you decide, uh, to people's cell phones with just a scripture, and then underneath it, if we've got some event going on at the church. So they look at that on their phone, oh, they got this going on. They're going to be giving away candy on Halloween. They're needing some candy. They're going to have a trunk or treat at the church. They may want to participate. They may want to bring their own children. See, you, you reach them through the media, all right? They talk about P 
people in the media, they talk online, they connect with people online, and boomers just don't do that, but millennials do. Churches need to be online and get yourself some good equipment, a quality camera. I looked at several churches this week online, and it, they got a static camera at the back of the auditorium, and you can't see the pastor. You wouldn't know him if he was your own brother. It's so distorted, and it's so far away, and the church is so dark. You can kind of hear what's going on, but seeing everything's not not working. So you need to get a quality camera where you can offer people a good picture and let them know when you're going to post the Sunday service. We post it uh, 3 o'clock on Sunday, or we post it sun Monday morning at 9 a.m. We'll post the service. We have it live, and then we repost it, all right? And then you can put a tag on there or get somebody at church that's tech savvy to add a little thing. Like if you have a church event, put it somewhere in there that you're having a church event coming up and let them know. Uh, last but not least, when we, we had COVID-19, churches lost attendance big time. Many churches closed down for four Sundays or eight Sundays. I even heard some closed for three months. And then depending on what area you go in and what age group was in your church, and then they went back and they social distanced everybody, and they never recuperated everybody they lost from COVID-19. So we need to come up with a system to reach everyone, not just the baby boomers. It's not easy being a pastor. All right, during COVID-19, you found that out. It's not easy being a pastor. If you ask them to wear a mask, you don't have no faith. You're not trusting in God. Then if you turn around and tell the boomers, well, they're not going to wear a mask. Everybody's coming to them. You don't care about us whether we die. I have diabetes, and my husband has heart trouble. has a weak heart. If we get COVID, it could push us over the edge. So I'm not coming to church. This is what the pastors were facing. Plus, they had the government breathing down their neck, telling them, you really ought to close up, and you ought to do this, you ought to do that. I'm a, and being a pastor in this day and age is not an easy job. And so we need to pray for our pastors. The Lord has to remain the main thrust of the church, the Word of God. What does the Word of God say about this or that? We need to give them the Word and give it to them the way that they'll receive it, meaning you may have to do it by text. You may have to do it on your Facebook page. You might have to get your own a web page, you know, like www.victoryworshipcenter.org or whatever your church name is, and you get your own website. But however you do it, it would be good if you could do it, post it on YouTube, if you could put it on Facebook, if you could put it on your own web page and let people know that you have those pages and have it on your brochures at church when you hand them out. 1 Timothy 4 and 1 says, But the Spirit explicitly says that in latter times some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to the deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. We have a great falling away with the church right now. The attendance is lower than it's been in many years. And not everybody returned after COVID. And the, the millennials, well, the vast majority, not all of them, but the vast majority don't go to church. They're unchurched. But many of them feel they're Christians, and they watch everything online, and they do everything online. So we have to reach people that we're not reaching from our pulpit. Latter times started when Jesus' resurrection happened, and every day and every year goes by, it gets closer and closer. We need to pray for our church. We need to look for ways to improve our church. We, can have, we need to embrace technology. And we need to reach the digital natives for God. This is something that the church has to do. If you don't know how to do it, then ask for help. Google it. Ask people in your congregation, anybody here that's tech savvy, whatever. Do what you got to do. When I set this channel up, all right, I used to work in TV and radio, but it was years and years ago when we had cameras that had three-quarter inch tape. Not your VCR tape, three-quarter inch thick. That was TV tape. We were on 16 TV stations, the show I worked for, all right? And I was in TV work, but it had been years and years ago. I, I had ran a camera 
I'm talking about real TV cameras, the ones you used to put up on your shoulder and walk around, the ones that's on a stand and your tripod. Yeah, I used to shoot cover for the football games and the basketball games and baseball games and and, and commercials and made commercials with people. And so I wrote a lot of commercials for a lot of Cardinal ball players. And so let me tell you, it's a different ball game now. So when I started this, I called my 18-year-old grandson, a senior in high school. I said, Andrew, you need to come over here and spend the weekend with your papa. And he come over and I said, here's the deal. I'm starting a YouTube channel. I need somebody that's tech savvy. All right, you got to get this done for me and teach me how to do it. All right. And he did. And so now he's teaching me how to edit. I'm hoping that I'll get into that real shortly. But if you if you want to reach people for Christ, you've got to do it through the media and get the millennials involved in the church. They're the church of not only the future, but they're the church of today. These people need God like everybody else. But if you don't reach out through the media and try to reach people, you're going to shorten your scope. And it's going to be about this wide instead of being like this. The more you can do, the more places you can place your service at, your church in front of people, the better opportunity you're going to have to serve people. So I want you to understand that and tell, and tell everybody in your church what you're trying to do. Evaluate things, and you'll be glad you did. I love you, and God loves you. Please subscribe to my channel. Try to give you things that help you. Try to give you things that maybe you're not getting. But I do the best I can to bring you the word of God. I want to thank you for your time. This time till next time, Randy says so long. Please watch my channel, other videos, and please subscribe. Thank you so much, and God bless you.